Yo, what's up? It's Ryan, and I'm bringing you a little video on how I made this track of mine. Uh, first of all, I'd like to apologize for my microphone. It is actually garbage, so there's not a whole ton I can do about it other than, like, just apologize for it. But I, I hope you can get over it. But anyways, this is my track, uh, Insouciance, I think is how it's pronounced. I honestly forgot. It was like dictionary.com's word of the day or something when I uh, <laughs> decided to name it. thought it was pretty pretty cool word. Anyways, it's in the title, you'll know. Um, but this is the track. Uh, I've got my instruments divided up into synth instrument, the basses, and the drums, which is a pretty standard way of doing things. But I'll just start from the beginning and go as the uh, the elements come in. All right. Whoops. Whoops. All right. So the first thing I've got is uh these intro things, and this is a trick I do all the time for like so many different reasons. Uh, Right here I've got a Rhodes, and all I did was I took this first hit, I put like a crap ton of reverb on it, uh, bounced it into audio, reversed it. Like that's literally all I did for that, and I think it sounds really cool. And I've also, I also did the same thing for the lead that comes in later in the track, uh, did the same thing for like a higher element. So that's literally all that is. Um, for the roads right here, I'm using this new plugin that I have. It's new to me. Uh, it's called Lounge Lizard, and it's a fantastic electronic piano roads um, synth or sampler or whatever it's technically classified as. It sounds really amazing, and I'm really enjoying it, especially because I love the sound of roads. And I'm surprised it's taken me this long to uh, actually get <laughs> the, uh, the synth, or the VST, whatever. Um, but yeah, love it, highly recommend it. Uh, Lounge Lizard by AAC, I'm pretty sure. I'm just going to make sure I'm recording. Alright, um, sounds like this if you're curious. Yeah, it's... Fantastic, um, fantastic Rhodes electronic piano thing. Um, but anyways, the next thing that comes in are these drums right here. And that's actually just Superior Drummer. <laughs> Nothing has changed from my FL days. I still love Superior Drummer. It's the best thing ever. Uh, and then it's just more Superior Drummer like right here. Uh, I've got an EQ like this on it, and other than that, that's the only thing that's going on uh, on this channel. I've got these two impacts, just to like add a hit, it's nothing really fancy at all. Um, just keeps going for a little bit. This offbeat thing comes in right here uh, yeah and I have it filtered in and I have so many offbeats and like so many of my tracks like so many offbeat instruments and in so many of my tracks just because I love like the groove it gives it and most of the time it's like actually just a square wave all right uh, it's a serum instance and it's like I said just a square wave nothing fancy going on I haven't set up J bridge yet I usually use massive for that um, like this sort of thing but I haven't set up J bridger uh, or J bridge yet I haven't bought it so I don't I can't use massive yet but eventually I'll get there uh, and get around to it uh, so that gets filtered in via uh, auto filter being compressed a, a bit 
uh, and it's the lows are being taken out and the highs are being boosted a little bit with this EQ right here. And it's also being sent to the um, the reverb channel, which I'm pretty sure is actually just the reverb. I didn't put Valhalla room on it. It's just pretty stock reverb. Um, yeah. All right, I've got this thing right here. Which is just like a riser straight out of Black, Doc Black Octopus Leviathan. Uh, it's a really, really good pack. But I've got reverb on it. I've got auto pan. And I'm automating the amount and the rate. So it's making it bounce back and forth between the two ears like really fast. And it just, it's a little thing to add a little more interest. Uh, and I've also got this noise riser which is a noise riser from Black Octopus, Leviathan. Um, and then it kinda hits. All right, I'm gonna go over the drums first just because there's a drastic change. Um, Superior Drummer cuts out except for cymbal work because organic cymbals are fantastic. Um, then this kick, is right here. Why are you not working? Oh, because I clicked the wrong one. That's why. So I have two instances of the kick. One's a soft kick and one's a, a kick. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, obviously. Honestly. But I'm um, EQing it like this. Pushing it pretty moderately in a multiband dynamics sounds like that I've got the uh, the fades going down super super quick as well um, really nothing fancy uh, I've got this clap and I'm honestly not sure where I got it from um, On browser. All right, it, it's uh, Tri Samples 808 Trap Step Pack Volume 2. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've downloaded that for, probably from Reddit a long time ago and I've been using it like here and there ever since. Um, but it's being compressed. I've got an EQ on it doing this sort of shape and it's being sent to the reverb channel a little bit. And that's all that's going on. This one's reversed to do that. And that's about it. Um, this hi-hat comes in. And it's kind of like a really clangy hi-hat. It's uh, from Black Octopus Leviathan. Uh, closed hi-hat number 12, if, you, if you're curious. Being, it's being sent a lot to the reverb, like 100% to the reverb. Uh, and it's only being high fast a little bit. So it's really nothing fancy. I do that sort of like glitch thing, like every four bars, I think. Just to add a little bit of interest. But, yeah, that's all that happens with the drums. Yeah, that's all that happens with the drums. While we're here, may as well go ahead and mention, I do have a glue compressor on these drums. Well, you guys, like a, a group, as a group, I've got a glue compressor on the entire group. Uh, without it, it sounds like this. with it sounds like this. And it, to me it just felt like punchier and closer to what I wanted so I just kind of tweaked. I honestly have no idea what they're doing, what, like what these parameters do. Um, I was just kind of kind of guessing. Uh, I'm still new to Ableton, still new to like everything that it does so I just kind of tweaked it until it sounded like what I wanted and I got there. So, yeah. Um, next I've got this bass track. And that is just this channel right here, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is the instrument. Um, and I just took this instrument 
or synth or whatever and bounced it into different channels and then chopped it up a bunch and all this is saw wave few voices sine wave few voices fm this saw by the sign and then mess with the mess with the the warp and the cutoff and that's all i did it's notch 24 it's got a sub also uh, it's being distorted and compressed it's really straightforward as far as synths go and it got cut up into this and that little thing right there that you heard is up four octaves <laughs> so that's why it sounded like a mario boop or something um pretty sure this also has a glue compressor on it it has a lot of stuff on it actually um, it's got a glue compressor, it's got a regular compressor uh, side chaining to the kick and another one side chaining to the clap. Usually what I do now is I, I've learned a little bit more about Ableton. I have like a separate audio channel that's kind of like a click like a or like a snap or something. Something really short and tight and like snappy. Um, I just have that as like the chain so I'll usually side chain it just to the like that and I just mute it and like I go like that and it's muted um, but I usually do that now but now I when I made this track had no idea how to do that so I just didn't um, this EQ uh, it's like this because without it I uh, there wasn't very much sub in this track honestly like Or there, there was, but like not, not enough for me, and uh, I don't know. So I, so I boosted the sub, arguably more than I should, but I'm not gonna, not gonna worry about it. Um, and that's all that happened with the basses. Uh, now back to the synth instrument. All right, so I've got this noise thing, which I'll go ahead and do. Real quick, it's a serum, uh, AC hum, and this LFO is just automating the level. But let me see. That's it. Um, probably the most basic sound you could possibly make. Uh, nothing fancy. I've got this pad, which is actually yet another lounge lizard. Uh, so. I just did that. Just to have like another thing, just kind of helping it flow and stay more full, because we've got this other one, which it doesn't really like have any sustain, but this one is like 100% sustain. So that's, wh that's why I put that in there. Um, I have this arpeggio that jumps in. Uh, a super simple sound. I've got this arpeggiator MIDI effect um, on a serum. Uh, it's just a sine wave. <laughs> or it's saw, I meant saw wave, with delay and a compressor. And that is it. It's super basic, but it's also super effective. These chords are also massive. Like there's a ton of notes. Like this is almost three octaves right here, I think. Uh, one, two, no, it's, al it's almost two octaves of like notes. So it like the chords, how it was written had like a lot to do with how it sounded. And I'm pretty sure I could have just like put up the like the distance or whatever over here, but I didn't. Um, I also have this utility over here because I automate the volume. So that's how that happened. I also have this other channel because I bounce it to audio, so, like for the drop and everything. 
uh, I got these synth chords that are getting filtered in, pretty sure. Okay, yeah. They're kind of just, just a super saw uh, with an auto filter on it and a EQ. EQ is knocking out some low end because it's got a lot of low end. If it doesn't have it, I'll show you. It's got a lot of low end given that like we have a sub already in the bases. Uh, it's literally just the Rhodes one like this Rhodes right here, the same MIDI and with like an extra bass layer, like this, just down. Or, no, 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 I've got like this is, like the Rhodes has that, but this has that, <laughs> if that makes any sense at all. But that's what's, that's what happened. Um, it's getting filtered in, so by the end, it's got all the high end, but on the synth instrument, I'm high passing everything with a EQ. So that's why it's like the low is getting knocked out as well. Um, next we've got this music box bounce, it looks like. <coughs> all right, so this is like an audio balance of the music box instrument right here that I currently have muted because it was kind of ridiculous. Uh, like it was just far too, I had far too much release on everything. Um, uh, give me that. It is, let me just, why can't I get to it? I'm confused. Uh, so it really doesn't have anything going on. I'm too new to Ableton to know why this is why this isn't working. But anyways, it's um, it's just like East West Quantum Leap play play VST. It's that under Goliath. That's the like the sound library that I got it from. And like actually, why doesn't it work? I, I'm so bewildered. Um, anyway, it's East West Quantum Leaf. I have the Composer Cloud, so I have like all of their libraries. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. And it's just the music box under Goliath, and it sounds really good. But it had like way too much release for like a kind of a techie drop. So I bounced it into audio, got this, and I have all these fades going and everything. So you look at the fades. Have all these fades going everywhere. Sounds like this. And I'm automating the send to reverb and delay a lot, which is what like a lot of the automation is. So yeah, we got that. It's just a nice thing to have like under everything. Um, when it drops, nothing really changes. It's just kind of like everything that was there, like all at the same time, you know? So it's not really anything. Right here we have the lead bounce coming in. Which is the same thing from the beginning, but a little louder. Uh, and then the lead solo. really nothing like this entire track was more on the like it's more impressive compositionally I think than production wise because the sounds are super basic but the editing is 
not as basic, if that makes any sense. Um, so the lead is this right here. It's two saw waves, 10 voices, seven voices. Uh, this one has sync on it with this LFO going at 1.8 hertz. You can get to that by hitting this BPM button right here. That turns it from like, like strict like bar half half beat, um, quarter beat, eighth beat, whatever eighth note, half note. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> I know music theory, uh, and it gives you just like hertz. It's more random and offset, so I like it. It's uh, on this sync, making it warp and everything like it's it's doing. Like if we if we bypass that. Then it's like not as interesting and it gives it a little bit of movement and everything. I also have portamento on down here. Um distorting it quite a bit. Delay, because it's a lead. <laughs> Compressor because it's a lead. And reverb because it's a lead. Um that's that's about it that entire drop really uh, I, I'll go over this synth instrument group real quick I've got another glue compressor doing basically the same thing as always this one's really not as drastic though um, these two compressors side chaining to the kick and the clap uh, this EQ is for the riser over here it high passes the entire thing. Um, oh, I missed this over here. I got this Rhodes bounce. And that's basically just a bounce of the like the Rhodes keyboard. Um, just as like a transition. I mixed it with the music box and the the lead bounce. So yeah. Um, then it goes into post drop. And for this I took the uh, drums and put an auto filter on the kick right here. The reason I didn't do that on the entire drums is because I still wanted this cymbal and like the, the impacts to hit without having to like send them to their own special group because I had already routed them into the drums and everything. So that's why I did that. Uh, oh, something I didn't mention in here is I've got reverse claps everywhere. I've also got this cave snare. And it's just kind of like an accent to the snare it, or the clap it mixes like this so I thought it helped give it a little bit of a punch so that's that's that I got it from a pack that frequent I think it was either frequent or AU5 I forget posted on Facebook forever ago and I've just had it kind of sitting around and I love those snares I'll show you what where they are Yeah, so great snares. Um, highly recommend it if you can go and hunt those down from wherever they are. I'm sorry, I couldn't be more helpful with that. But yeah, um, the kick filters out into. And then it's just like a bunch of the same stuff, but like arranged differently. I'm like playing different things. The lead has a filter on it. And then it goes. And then it's actually just all the same stuff <laughs> again, but um, like playing different chords. 
Like, it's simple. I've got this kalimba that comes in. And it might have, oh my god, it did come in on the other stuff too. And it's just like a backup instrument. Um, I've got this. This is this is East West Quantum Leap. This is the same thing I got the uh, the music box from, but I want it open for some reason. Um, Goliath Orchestra. That's incorrect. <laughs> ethnic percussion pitched. Ethnic pitched. Kalimba. That's that's where I got it. Um, it's just got. I think a little a little bit of reverb, just a little bit. Um, it's got a utility on it so I can automate the volume and it's also knocking out the low end because I do that for everything just in case. Um, towards the second half of this drop I put in some haze because I listened to trap once. Yeah, and they're super cliche, super dumb. I, like. I just needed something. Uh, it's just from some pack somewhere. I'm sure you could get it like literally anywhere. But I'm actually not even touching that. It's just kind of doing its own thing. I'm not processing it at all. And then I have a giant master fade out. And And that's like literally all it is. Uh, for the master chain, though, I have this utility on it because I mix and like produce and compose super quietly because I, I'm just super paranoid about like protecting my ears and headphones. Uh, so I always produce at like negative <laughs> twelve, and yeah, it's just that's just how I am because I'm nuts, but. Yeah, that's why the utility is there. I've got a little bit of a boost right around, I think that's uh, probably about 4,000, maybe. Um, yeah, because I didn't have enough, like, it was pretty dull before it. I'll show you what I did. It's super slight, but it just felt not balanced before so I fixed it with an EQ on the master <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do um, then I have Maximus because even though I'm in Ableton gotta use FL stuff right uh, so I, I have Maximus on here because I'm too cheap to buy ozone the low is all the way mono and boost it a little bit uh, with the pre and post gain. Mid is probably about, it's 26% separated, and high is 56% separated. And that's all that, that is happening for that. I've got a pre gain boost on the master because, like I said, I produce very quietly. And if you look at like these tracks, each of them are like negative 15 and everything. So yeah, and that is everything that went into making this track. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something, and subscribe if you did, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and goodbye.